Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis, the channel where we look at complex organic chemistry and explain how it works. Today, we are going to look at the total synthesis of minovincine and a speedofractinine. This work was carried out by the SOAS group at the Research Centre for Natural Sciences in Budapest. Both of these compounds belong to the Aspidosperma family of alkaloids, a class of compounds featuring polycyclic, cage-like structures. The Aspidosperma family have been the target of many total syntheses due to these challenging structures. In particular, due to the difficulty of constructing the quaternary carbon centres. The syntheses presented in this paper are notable due to their brevity and the simplicity of the reactions used. The authors stated that their intention was to minimise protecting group manipulations and exotic reagents in order to develop streamlined and practical methodologies to construct the polycyclic frameworks. As we will see, this was accomplished with great success. So first, let's look at the retrosynthesis. The retrosynthesis for both minovincine and aspidofractinine led to a tricyclic intermediate common to both molecules. This intermediate could be derived from a functionalized cyclohexanone via a sequence of nucleophilic additions to construct the framework. Simple aldol chemistry could be employed to synthesize the cyclohexanone using a chiral catalyst to introduce a single stereocenter, which would function to guide the stereochemistry for the rest of the synthesis. The synthesis starts with a tandem Michael addition and Robinson annulation. The product of this reaction is a highly functionalized alpha-beta unsaturated cyclohexanone with the desired stereochemistry and a 90% enantiomeric excess. The high stereoselectivity of this reaction is produced by using an organocatalyst to control the approach of the nucleophile. The catalyst used in the reaction was a quinine conjugated squaramide. The chirality of the catalyst arises from the quinine moiety, a naturally occurring molecule produced by the synchona tree. The tertiary amine can act as a base and also as a hydrogen bond acceptor, while the squaramide moiety can act as a strong hydrogen bond donor and activate carbonyl centers. The naphthalene rings can take part in pi stacking and hydrophobic interactions and help orientate the substrate inside the chiral pocket of the catalyst. The electrophile sits within the catalyst with the hydrogen bonds from the square mite holding it in place and also increasing the electrophilicity by acting in a manner similar to protonation. The nucleophile reacts with the enol tautomer and approaches the electrophile from the front face as the naphthalene rings block the back face of the molecule. This step completes the Michael addition and forms a new carbon-carbon single bond. The next step of the tandem reaction sequence is a Robinson annulation. This happens while the molecule is still within the chiral pocket of the catalyst and occurs with a high stereoselectivity. The enol of the beta keto ester adds to the aldehyde, and the resulting beta hydroxyketone undergoes an E1Cb elimination to form a new double bond in the molecule. Overall, this step forms a cyclohexanone ring with a quaternary centre in a highly stereoselective manner. The synthesis proceeds to the next stage, which is to form two more rings in a single reaction sequence. This transformation is accomplished using a nucleophilic cascade strategy. The first nucleophilic addition is the SN2 substitution of the chloride. The amine then adds in a conjugate fashion to the enone to form a piperidine ring. The highly electrophilic quaternary aziridinium ring is then attacked by iodide, which opens to produce an ethyl iodide moiety. The enolate intermediate, which was formed by the conjugate addition of the amine, then attacks the iodide centre in the final nucleophilic addition, which forms the second ring of the cascade. Both of these rings form with excellent stereoselectivity, which is controlled by the configuration of the quaternary centre of the starting material which orientates the reacting electrophilic sites over the top face of the molecule. This completes the synthesis of the common intermediate required for minovincine and the speed of ractinine. With the synthesis of the tricyclic intermediate complete, 
we can now turn our attention towards the minovincine target. To this end, the ester was decarboxylated using sulfuric acid. The ester is first hydrolyzed and then the resulting acid was induced to eliminate as carbon dioxide. The reaction is possible due to the ketone group in the beta position relative to the ester. This configuration allows for a six-membered transition state where the ketone abstracts the acidic proton while the elimination of carbon dioxide drives conversion to the enol. The reaction happens in a concerted manner and is entropically very favoured due to the loss of carbon dioxide gas, which drives the reaction forward. The enol rapidly tautomerizes to a ketone upon completion to give the desired product. The next step was a Fischer indole synthesis with phenylhydrazine. This acts as a nucleophile and forms a hydrazone imine, tautomerizes to an enamine. Lewis activation is accomplished with boron trifluoride which triggers a 3-3 sigmatropic rearrangement to produce a new carbon-carbon bond. The boron trifluoride is transferred to the alkyl amine and the aryl amine then acts as a nucleophile to attack the aminium centre to produce a five-membered ring. Elimination of the boron trifluoride ammonia adduct completes the reaction sequence to yield the desired indole in a 50% yield, in addition to the other possible structural isomer, which was formed in a 31% yield. The other isomer is generated by the initial hydrazone enamine forming on the secondary carbon centre as opposed to the intended tertiary carbon centre. The indole synthesis completes the pentacyclic skeletal framework of minovincine by installing the two required rings in a stereocontrolled manner. The steric bulk of the tricyclic framework only allows for the rearrangement to occur from one phase of the molecule, which ensured that only the desired enantiomer of the target quaternary centre was formed. With the cage framework complete, the authors turned their attention to installing the correct oxygen pendant groups. An acetyl group was installed using methyl cyanoformate, which is also known as Mander's reagent. Reaction of the pentacycle with LDA deprotonated the position alpha to the indole imine to generate an enaminolate nucleophile, which added to Mander's reagent with the expulsion of cyanide. This produced the target C acylated product in a 75% yield, together with the N acylation byproduct in 12%. The imine tautomerizes to the amine conjugated unsaturated ester following the addition of the carboxyl group to the molecule. The next phase of the synthesis is the installation of the only protecting group in the entire sequence. In order to protect the alpha beta unsaturated ester, and leave the quaternary alkyl ester free to react. The molecule was reacted with triisobutyl aluminium. The base deprotonates the amine nitrogen to form a sterically hindered aluminium complex. While it might be expected that the compound might form an aluminium enolate type structure, NMR studies do not show any evidence of its presence. Nonetheless, the molecule is sufficiently protected for the next reaction to discriminate between the two ester groups. After the formation of the aluminium protected adduct, trimethylsilyl methyl lithium was added directly to the solution. This acts as a nucleophile and adds to the unprotected ester to form a tetrahedral intermediate. Lithium ethoxide is expelled to produce a TMS functionalized ketone. Both the TMS and the aluminium groups are hydrolyzed upon workup with Rochelle's salt to yield the target in a 68% yield. This completes the synthesis of minovincine in an incredible eight steps with only one transient protecting group and one chiral catalyst used to produce the highly complex pentacyclic molecule. With the synthesis of minovincine complete, we can now turn our attention towards the speed of Starting with the intermediate molecule common to both syntheses, the authors carried out a functional group interconversion to convert the methyl ester to a methyl ketone using the same TMS methyl lithium methodology as previously described. This reaction was selective for the methyl ester due to the steric hindrance of the terp butyl ester, which eliminated the need for a protecting group. The beta keto terp butyl ester was then decarboxylated using sulfuric acid in the same manner as was used in the minovincine synthesis.
The Aspido fractinine synthesis uses a Fischer indole sequence to install the indole moiety, similar to minovincine. However, it has a significant variation. It is a cascade sequence that leads to a manic reaction. The reaction proceeds in the same manner as previously described. However, once the indole ring is formed, it is activated by the boron trifluoride, which increases the electrophilicity of the imine centre. With a ketone present in the molecule in place of the ester, it now has the ability to act as a nucleophile in the enol form and add to the aminium carbon centre. The product of this reaction is a newly formed ring with an additional quaternary carbon. This quaternary carbon is produced as a single isomer due to the inherent chirality and steric bulk of the molecular framework and does not require any additional chiral catalyst to control the stereoselectivity. The final step of the aspidofractinine synthesis is the removal of the ketone group. A wolf kishner reduction was used to complete this transformation. Hydrazine reacts with the carbonyl group to form a hydrazone, which is then deprotonated with potassium hydroxide. The carbon is then protonated and the dinitrogen group is deprotonated again to trigger the elimination of nitrogen gas, after which the molecule is again protonated. This completes the reduction of the ketone and also the synthesis of aspidofractinine. So to recap on this work, the authors synthesized minovincine and aspidofractinine in a highly efficient manner using only eight steps each to construct the complex cage-like structures. Only one chiral catalyst was used to induce chirality while all the other steps were controlled using meticulously planned reaction sequences, which took advantage of the existing chirality to control the stereochemistry. One transient protecting group was used in the study, and the reagents and reactions are simple and can be carried out on the multi-gram scale. This work represents a valuable addition to alkaloid synthesis methodology for its creative and efficient approach to constructing complex polycyclic structures. That's everything for this synthesis. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe. If you have any content that you'd like to see, please let me know in the comments down below.